outback Australia, an unforgiving territory, and a land of amazing creatures, where sometimes nature needs a helping hand. These are the everyday heroes bound by a single mission to save wildlife anywhere, anytime. In this episode of Outback Wildlife Rescue, triple trouble with three angry crocs. Naughty. And checking in on old friends. Has world first treatment cured Boris the koala's cancer? This is the start. We hope something fantastic for the future. And what's become of matey, the peg leg swan? Can't be apart from one another. <laughs> Australia's wildlife is as diverse as its landscape. From the tropical Queensland coast to the Northern Territory and monsoonal Darwin and the nearby Kakadu wetlands and on 1,500 kilometres to the red deserts of Alice Springs and beyond. We've met Boris the koala before on Outback Wildlife Rescue. He's a trailblazer and a heartbreaker. Hey, Bori. Hello. Very gorgeous. Koalas are prone to a number of diseases, including cancer. Boris has one. Such a lump feeling, hey? A sarcoma that showed up as a large tumour on his chest. Last time we saw Boris, the Australian Wildlife Hospital had decided on a world-first approach to treating him a course of radiation therapy to reduce his tumour. Like my child being in there, <laughs> it is, yeah. It's funny how you feel about them and seeing them under such a big machine and they're by themselves, you really sort of get that, you know, loneliness aspect of it. So, yeah, it's just like watching your own child getting something nasty done, <laughs> but something good at the same time. The early signs were promising. His cancer had shrunk. <laughs> some really good news. Boris's tumour has shrunk and it's gone down by a centimetre all the way around, which is fantastic. He's a good boy. But now the treatment's over, we're about to find out Boris's chances of long-term survival. So how are you going, Marky? Hmm? How's my boy? In Darwin, it's a bittersweet day for Ted Plevnik. Look at your tussy pigs, eh? Yeah. For years now, Ted's been the proud owner of three freshwater crocodiles, Mark Antony, Cleopatra and Anita. Been here, I don't know, maybe six years. And uh, it's all pretty well behaved. They're Ted's much-loved pets, and they love him, apparently, but he just can't look after them anymore. Today's the day, Ted, last chance to bail out. Nah, no, nah, no, nah. it's all yours, mate, definitely. Ted's made reptile wrangler Chris Peabody an offer he can't refuse. Ted rang me one day and said that uh, he's getting on a bit and that he needed to, um, to get rid of these crocodiles and uh, I was the person that he wanted to take them. So Chris has brought a mob of men to help move Ted's three crocs to his place. Grab those as well, we'll take those down. They go for blindfolds and the tape's in the car. But he's not taking today's job lightly. He knows one slip up could be deadly. What we've got to do is we've got three adult freshwater crocodiles um, in a pen and it's going to be difficult to get them out, but we've got to try and separate them. If we bring out uh, the male first, it means that the girls are a lot safer. So we'll probably get Mark Anthony, the, uh, the largest, and he's one of the biggest freshies we've ever seen. Marky. Marky, come grab the boy. Come here, boy. People think just because they're a freshwater crocodile, they're not dangerous. Well, they actually are quite dangerous. They, um, they've got teeth that are noticeably longer than a saltwater croc of the same size. And in captivity, they do become aggressive and territorial. Easy, boy. Yeah, just let him go, let him go. This could be Chris's toughest assignment yet. Oh, my God. The table. Back here again. How does that feel? Boris the koala has finished his five rounds of radiation treatment, but how's he getting on now? 
He's looking really good. We're really pleased with his progress. He's um, so much happier in himself, which is wonderful to see. And he's eating well, doing all the things that normal koalas do, which is fantastic. His general health has improved, but the biggest question of all is, has the radiation worked against his cancer? Gail keeps a running check on the tumour's size. It's actually reduced by four centimetres now, and we're really excited about that, and we're hoping that that means that not only that it helps Boris, that it goes on to help a lot more wild animals in the future. That reduction means Boris is a far happier koala than he's been for some time. Nine. So he's shooting between nine and nine, two. He's putting on weight, and he's more able to get into trouble. I'm going to go for a walk. The lump itself has caused him a great deal of grief. It was quite large in the beginning, so and it's up near the joint of the arm, so it's very uncomfortable, gets in the way when he wants to move and when he wants to climb. With the reduction of it, we've seen a lot more um, movement in him. He can actually place his hand on the ground now, which he couldn't do before. He can climb a tree, which he couldn't do before, and his appetite's increased um, immensely. <laughs> That looks good. He's looking really well. So, at the very least, Boris has shown radiation treatment is a good option for koalas in the future. We see a lot of animals each year, particularly koalas, with um, sarcomas like Boris's as well as lymphoma and leukaemia. So this is the start, we hope, of something fantastic for the future. But what about Boris's future? Sadly, because his cancer's not completely gone, he might never be well enough to be released. But Gail's ever the optimist. Just maybe he will. You're going to have a great life, aren't you, Boris? Go out there and have lots of babies. Yes? Of course I am, he says. <laughs> yes, you are, aren't you? Thanks. Smelling the gum trees. That's where you belong, isn't it? Up in the trees, not with humans. At the Ark Animal Hospital in Darwin, some animals just can't help but capture hearts. A few months ago, these two little agile wallabies did. A little girl, a little boy, double trouble. They were flown in from the Tiwi Islands. Both had shotgun wounds. This wallaby would have still been in its pouch when its mother was shot. Um, people would have shot it for, to eat. The little male had been shot through the paw. There was nothing they could do to repair it, so he just had to learn to adjust to his problem. But the female they called Chantel was in worse shape. A pellet had lodged in her back and smashed her hip. Right, so we're just going to cut down on this bullet here. OK, there's the bullet. The injury was bad. Fixing the damage that this little bullet already did is going to be the hard bit. Stephen could only remove the bone fragments and hope for the best. Now, three months later, Chantel's living with carer Inga McFarlane. So she's recovered fairly well. Um, she's getting there. She's still not moving around 100%, but she's, she's getting by. So there she is. Hello, sweetheart. How are you growing, hey? So she's, she's not showing, like, she's putting weight on both feet. She's feet. putting weight on her foot. It's still a little bit swollen, but, yeah. And you can see she's still not Is she still 100%. on pain relief? Or? No, we've stopped that now, because she, she didn't like it. Chantel's still a little tentative on that leg. Lisa wants to check her out to make sure there's no serious ongoing problem. There's no muscle wastage or anything from when the bullet went through. It all looks really good. Can't even tell which leg it was, really. Her wound might be on the mend, but life's still pretty tough for Chantelle. A few days ago, a pack of dogs tried to get into her pen. Everything that could go wrong has gone wrong with the poor little darling. I couldn't believe it when we came home and the dogs had been up at them. And poor Chantelle, she couldn't even move. She was just glued to the spot, oh. and we got such a fright. Chantelle's short life has been far from easy, but she's progressing. And just maybe her run of bad luck will soon be over. You ready? Can put you back down. Going to be able to run free soon. A little bit of time to go, and then you'll be off. Chris Peabody is in the middle of a triple rescue attempt, moving three pet freshwater crocs. 
He's starting with the large male, Mark Antony. 30 years old and two and a half metres long. About as big as a freshwater croc gets. Normally in a planned situation, as soon as you can get that top jaw rope on, they roll and wrap it up. Nothing ever goes to plan. Because he's been a pet, he's not scared of people, which means people should be very scared of him. Oh, good one. See if we can get the second rope on. You ready? He's going to come out. He's going to come out firing. Mark, he's coming. Oh. They've come got on. to secure him. Time for the gang to gang up on Mark Antony before he gets out of control. Come on. Jump on him. So, while these guys, it looks quite brutal what they're doing, lying on him. When a croc's secure like this, he can't build up, he can't thrash, he can't bang himself on anything more. You see he's taking a little bit of bark off himself there. Um, we're going to get the vet to have a quick look at that. We've got some, um, some antiseptic just to treat that. This is a true mercy mission. In the Territory, it's legal to keep crocs as pets, but you can't just turn them loose if you don't want them anymore. After growing up in captivity, they don't have the skills to survive in the wild. We're gonna go grab the next one. It's one croc down. Oh, well, let's go. But there's still two to go. Come, come, come. Come, 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 come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're going to be a handful. Yep, she comes. Come on. Come, come. We're gonna go grab the bigger girl. I'm gonna try and get a top jaw rope on her. I don't wanna grab the little girl first, just in case the big girl bites her in half. Chris Peabody is still up to his neck in crocodiles. He's calling in Lachlan as backup. It's wet underfoot in here, so be conscious of actually just not tripping over your feet. Make sure they keep apart, because these guys could come and move very quickly. If we fall over in here, it could become pretty disastrous. Just because they're freshwater crocs doesn't mean they can't give a nasty bite. Yep. All right? Yep. All right, let's get into it. But don't go too far forward, Lock. Stay behind me. Chris is starting with Cleopatra, a full-grown female. Like all freshies, she has distinctive brown bands up her tail and body. Back up, back up, back up. Grab one of my sticks. Right, back up. He's more worried about her distinctive needle-sharp teeth. Ready, Dave, simply pull tight, lock on, move back. Right, just wait, wait, wait. OK, stop, camera crew out. Don't pull on it, just take the ropes. Everyone, out. Lachlan, out. Dave, out. Take the ropes with you. Jamie, wet towel. All right. Bring her out. Watch yourself, Ted. Bring her out. Yeah, on the ground. Poor Cleo's safely subdued at the bottom of a pile of blokes. There's no such thing as overkill in this situation. Two down, just little Anita to go. And as fierce as she tries to look, she's no match for this team. Keep going, just slowly bring her out, bring her out. Keep going. Wait. I gotta, that's it, I gotta. See? Just around there, yep. Last one. <laughs> Chris has all three crocs captured in the back of his truck. It's a sad farewell for Ted, but now Chris needs to get them to their new pen fast. Uh, I've got a ute full of crocs here. I've got to move quite quickly to get them back into uh, their new pond. I don't want their stress levels getting up too high, so uh, I've got to hit the road. On a previous Outback Wildlife Rescue, we met Riley, the young Eastern Grey kangaroo. Carer Jenny brought him into the wildlife hospital at Biwa. Jenny's brought to our attention that this kangaroo's got a, a deformity in the tail. 
He did. An X-ray confirmed just how bad the problem was. Yeah, so we've got uh, very severe deformity in these two vertebrae. We've got what looks like fusion of these. We've also got a bit of deformity occurring in this one. With that twisted tail, Riley wouldn't have survived in the wild. John decided to straighten it with a risky operation he'd never performed before. I'll do an incision over where the worst deviation is. We take a wedge out and then pull it together. It should hopefully straighten the, um, straighten the deformity up. And then we'll have to hold it in place with, with pins. But would it work for Riley? How are you going? Good, thanks. Hey, Jenny. Hey, Riley. A few months later, it's time to find out. So, how's he been going? Good. Riley is back at Biwa. He's had a tough time, and it hasn't been a smooth recovery. We removed the pins, um, but unfortunately, what Riley had done is um, fractured the last vertebra that had a pin in it, and then we applied a splint to um, address the the fracture. So we're now at the point where I think we can probably we can probably take that splint off today. As the splint comes off, finally it looks like there's good news for Riley. Looks all right. Looks like a completely different tail mm. than the one we saw originally. I'm really happy with the way he's gone actually. I originally didn't expect that we'd get quite so much straightening of the tail with the first operation, but that's really uh, it's a really good outcome. It's really straight from the sideways point of view. We, we've still got a little bit of a, a, a kick up in the end of the tail here, but I'm really not worried about that at all. So um, I'm thrilled that you know we've been able to fix this up because I, I remember at the time I was not feeling very confident at all. So once again, Riley has pulled through. This time, John's sure it's his last visit. You. Okay, Thanks a lot. Riley faces a few more months with Jenny, but all signs are good that he'll eventually be able to rejoin a mob of wild kangaroos. Just one of millions on the Australian landscape, but one with an incredible tail. It's been a long, hot day for Chris Peabody. He's rounded up three freshwater crocs. Now all that's left is to release them into their new home at his place. We're going to take first court, his first into the pond. Um, we'll get him in there. He can go down the bottom of the pond, hopefully, and relax. Yep. The accommodation is basic, but so are their needs just enough water to wallow in. There's your new home, Marky. And a chicken every couple of weeks. Chris has a ready-made family. Mark Anthony, Cleopatra and Anita. Hey, naughty. And that's the, uh, the tail wag of success. They should live well past 70. And Chris is hoping he never has to move them again. Oh, guys, nice. job well done, eh? Thank you very much. Nice work. Yep. Easy. Good stuff. Oh, let's go get some beers. Good girl. Good, Good boy. Perhaps the two most extraordinary people we met were two of the most dedicated, the Twinnies. Good boy. The most single-minded double act in Australia. Mr. Percival, no. They've spent most of their lives rescuing birds. Dedicated, caring, enthusiastic times two. Without the twinnies, this black swan wouldn't be alive. As a signet, Matey lost part of her leg to a hungry eel. A while back, they took her to the wildlife hospital to convince vet John Hanger to fit a peg leg. I think what we're going to have to do is make up a little um, a little prosthetic leg, a peg leg for her, just to get her through the growing period um, so that she doesn't end up with bone and joint problems from walking off, off balance. So John began peg leg mark one. Thank you. Thank you, darling. 
There you go, brand new leg. That's go. better, isn't it? Yes. Now, four months later, Matey's growing into a swan and seems quite happy with her peg leg, even if she does look like something out of a pirate movie. We're happy with her leg, her, with her result, and we just hope that she'll get a lot bigger and then we'll be able to release her because she'll be mainly living on the water. She just carries on like a normal swan, what gets around grazing and... Yeah, and, and we've had to mother her like a mother swan would because they look after their siblings till about six months old. Matey's got a mate too. Matey moves, Paddy's behind her. A white duck called Paddy. So Matey has adopted Paddy, Paddy and Paddy, Paddy loves Matey and they can't, can't be apart can't from one another. another now. <laughs> so it's the odd couple. couple. <laughs> So life's looking good for Matey. He's on Paddy. <laughs> In another few months, she'll be released. She won't need her peg leg anymore. She'll be just another ordinary black swan cruising Queensland's waterways, living a life thanks to the dedication of two extraordinary people. And it'll be a very good feeling, and I no doubt free. to see her free, and no doubt that we'll have big cry when she goes, but they'll be only happy tears. Yes. For all our wildlife carers and thousands more like them across Australia, the 24-hour job of looking out for native creatures goes on. It's a profession and a vocation and a way of life. Come on, Rob. Making a positive difference to the mammals, and birds and reptiles that all too often these days need human help just to survive. It's a varied role and sometimes a dangerous one. Every day out on Darwin Harbour, Tommy Nichols and his team are chasing down crocs. Yeah, that's one less uh, problem for the local fishermen and also the tourists. Catherine, young David Reed expects a call out any minute, any day. You know what sort of snake it is? Why? It's a banded tree snake. He's making sure encounters between humans and snakes don't end badly for either side. From Biwa to Alice Springs, from Catherine to Darwin, these everyday heroes are committed to helping nature when it can't help itself. Not every battle will be won, but they believe every animal, every life is special and worth saving. And when that happens, and a second chance is granted, it's hard to argue.